Hi everyone, it's Thais, Technical Evangelist at Varnish Software, welcoming you to another episode of Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, a weekly show about Varnish technology presented to you in two minutes or less. In this week's episode, and in next week's one as well, as a matter of fact, we'll be talking about installing Varnish. This video is about installing Varnish on Debian and Ubuntu Linux systems, and in next week's episode, we'll talk about CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We won't be just installing any version of Varnish, it will be a specific one, Varnish Cache 6.0 LTS. And as the LTS part indicates, it's the long-term supported and stable version of Varnish. However, it's still open source, but it's not maintained by the open source community, it's maintained by us, by Varnish Software. And we provide frequent bug fixes and also feature backports from the upstream versions. So allow me to explain in two minutes or less how to install Varnish on a Debian or an Ubuntu system. I'll put two minutes on the timer, ready, set, go. Installing Varnish on a Debian or Ubuntu Linux system will be done using the APT package manager. But before we can start installing, we need to make sure all the dependencies are in place. The first step is updating the package list so we have the most recent information on all packages and package versions. Once we've done that, we can install a couple of software dependencies required for the installation procedure. After that, we can use some of these dependencies to make preparations. In this case, we're loading the GPG key from the package cloud repository into the package manager. Next up, we need to source the etc os release file to enable some of the operating system and distribution related variables, which we'll use in the next step. And in this step, we'll use those variables to compose the location of the package repository, and that will be stored into a specific file that is loaded by the apt package manager. The variables that we use from the os release file are id and the distribution code name. So that could be Ubuntu Focal on an Ubuntu system, or that could be Debian Buster on a Debian system. We also need to make sure that our version of the packages are prioritized over other packages that might be available in the operating system and that might have a higher version number. This information is stored in a specific preferences file. Once all this metadata is in place, we need to update the package list again, ensuring that our package repository is taken into account as well. And then we can install Varnish using the apt get install Varnish command. Once Varnish is installed, we need to ensure that the service is enabled and survives any potential restarts. And then it's a matter of editing the service file using the systemctl edit command, and this will open up an editor and display the runtime information. The part of this information that is of particular interest to us is the Varnish D command and its runtime parameters. We can edit those, for example, ensure that it listens on port 80 and that it has two gigabytes of memory instead of 256 megabytes. Save the service file, close the editor, and run sudo systemctl restart varnish to restart varnish and to finalize the entire install procedure. Now you know how to install a supported and stable version of varnish on Debian and Ubuntu Linux systems. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we'll do the same thing, but for CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems. See you next week.